In this one we're going to look at testing and we're going to consider how we should handle messages when we are in test scenarios. So there are a couple of ways of doing this. My more favoured approach, which I've always done in the past, is to sort of run the tests synchronously and have testables which will fake sending emails and fake creating PDFs. But there is another way that we can do this and it's a way which I'll show you in this one. And that is to have an in-memory transport, which is a fake transport. We can send messages to it, but they just won't get handled. And so that's what we'll use here. The way that we set this up is it all starts in our messenger.yaml file and we have this new syntax in Symfony 6 inside of our um, config files where we can say when at test and then we can override some of the keys which we've seen previously in this file. So here we see our uh, message messenger transports async keys and then here we have the very same thing. So when we're running it in test mode these get overridden here. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. So let's go ahead and uncomment this and there are a few other steps to follow also. We then need to go into packages and we're looking for doctrine.yaml and the bit that I want to remove is this part here where I'm uh, prefixing the test database name so I'm just going to get rid of that because we're mainly using doctrine for messenger so we're not using it to store data in the database per se so I don't really need a test database for this one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my .env .test file and this is just to stop something from annoying me really so see here if you're working on the same version as me you've probably got the symphony deprecations helper entry in your .env test file i'm just going to set that to disabled and then i won't get a load of deprecation notices for this that and the other okay so one last step and then we can write our test and that is to composer require hyphen hyphen dev symphony forward slash test pack It's asking me the question regarding Docker, do I want to include Docker configuration from recipes? I'm just going to say no to this for the time being. So that's all installed. You'll notice some instructions down here regarding uh, Symfony PHP unit bridge. It says write to your tests in the test folder, which I was going to do anyway. And it says use the maker bundle, the maker bundles make test command as a shortcut. Uh, I probably won't need to do that. And then it says run the tests with PHP bin PHP unit. So I'll probably do that. Whereas uh, sometimes you'll have seen, or most of the time in your applications, you'll run it using vendor bin PHP unit. But what we have here in the uh, bin folder, the binary folder, next to our console file, we have this PHP unit file. So we can run it using that command, which it suggests. Let's go and write that test. So in tests, I'm going to create a folder called controller and I'm going to grab the name of our controller which is stock transaction controller and I'm going to use that in the name of my test. So back down to tests in the controller folder new file PHP class stock transaction controller and then on there I'm just going to add the test suffix. Do I want to add that to Git? We'll say yes. As you can see, the namespace is done automatically for me. If we go to our Composer JSON file and just remind ourselves of what uh, we set up for our auto loading. So here, auto load dev uh, PSR4, we are mapping the app tests namespace to our tests folder. And so that is why we get that particular mapping, which we see there. Okay, so this needs to extend a Symfony uh, test case file called web test case. Because this is going to be more of a functional test and we'll be executing the code inside our controller. Okay, that's right, our first test. So public function and we'll call this test by stocks. I'm going to create a, like a mimic client which mimics making web requests. So client equals... I'm going to say static 
colon colon and the method we are looking for is a static method called create client. Don't need any arguments for that, but using this we can imitate making uh, client requests. So client request, we need the method as the first argument and the endpoint as the second argument. The first assertion I'm going to make is just to assert that we get a success response, so a 200 response. And I can do that with a built-in method. Assert response is successful. It'll tell me that I can use uh, self here, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is, so I'm just going to disable that inspection. Next, what I want to do is actually obtain my async transport from the container and you can do that like so. I can say this get container and then on there the particular key which I want to get from the container and that will be messenger transport async so messenger then transport and you'll see that it pops up there if you're using uh, PHP Storm with the Symfony plugin enabled. Okay, and then using that, I can just make an assertion to see that a message was sent. The way I'll do that is I'll assert count. I'm looking for a count of one, and then I'll say transport get sent, which will return to me the number of messages which were sent. Okay, time to run this. So I need to uh, use the Symfony binary in order to run this. Thinking about my application, I have uh, particular environment variables, and if I don't use the Symfony uh, binary, I don't pre prefix this command with the word Symfony, then I'll get errors. So, Symfony PHP, and then it's bin forward slash PHP unit. Okay, and we get one test two assertions so our two assertions were we're checking that we're getting a successful response and we're checking that exactly one message was sent on the async transport how about if i go and change this to zero and we run it again just to make sure that this is not passing by accident and so that time we get a failure failed asserting that size one matches expected size zero Perfect, so we know that this is working and that one message is definitely being sent. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.